Hello there. As promised, I would like to go through some of the questions from the test where I saw some patterns. Um, now, very quickly, I cannot guarantee what you will or will not hit or hear in the background. Um, I'm currently outside in a campground. So if you hear something weird in the background, just mind your business and keep on going. Um, one of the first ones I noticed some patterns with were the rounding questions. Um, and one of the things it occurred to me was to think about these in terms of money. In this question, we're supposed to take this big old number and round it to the nearest hundredth. And I started thinking, if we change this to money, so if we look at this as $7,165 and some change, we've got 48 cents and then a little bit more, not quite 49 cents. If we take this idea of hundredths, we know that 100 pennies is one whole dollar. So that means one penny is one one hundredth of a dollar. So really, what we want to round is that pennies place. To round to the nearest hundredth, the nearest penny, if we pretend that this is money, we come over here and we go next door. And the rule is, if it is five or bigger, round up. Four or smaller, round, what am I saying? You just leave it alone. So in this case, we're looking at a two. I know two is definitely smaller than four. So we're going to leave that eight just like it is. We would round this to $7,165 if we still stick with the money idea and 48 cents because we don't have quite enough to round up to 49 cents. So try to relate these to money. If they had said round to the nearest tenth, Well, you know that there are 10 dimes in $1. So one dime is one tenth of a dollar. So if you're rounding to the tenths place, try looking at it as the dimes place. The next one I noticed a pattern with was this idea of percent of increase or decrease. When you're looking for percent change, you want the old price minus the new price divided by the old times 100. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some absolute value bars and I'm gonna put them on the top because sometimes if we had a price, um, hold on, I need to switch these. This is new minus old. Yes. 
sometime. No. You can't land on me. No, 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 no. Go, go. Sorry, y'all. Uh, our campsite has been adopted by a kitty who is trying to crawl into my lap, and I'm highly allergic to her. Okay. So if the new price is actually lower than the old price, our percent change would be a decrease. Sometimes that can happen. The absolute value bars prevent you from getting a negative in the numerator. It's not really going to do much in this problem. If we look at the new price, that would be the $4.79. The old price I know you're a sweet kitty, but you can't live in my lap. $3.89 is the old price. Divided by the old. I'm going to go find my calculator. Because I know enough to know I should not try to do this without one. And one of the things I really like about Desmos is you can do the whole problem in one fell swoop and not have to worry about making mistakes when you copy down a number to re-plug in. So it looks like my percent change is 20.82 percent it says to round to the nearest tenth well that would be if we pretend this is money we want to round to the dimes place so we go next door look at that too Two is definitely small, smaller than five. So we're gonna leave the eight alone. So this becomes 20.8% for our percent change. Here again is another rounding problem. Again, we're rounding to the nearest hundredth. That means I'm going to take a look at the pennies place, that second place from the right of the decimal point. To decide what to do with the one, I'm going to come over here and look at the three. That highlighter was a little big. I'm going to look at the three. Three is smaller than five, so it's four or smaller. That means the one doesn't change. So we would have $2,165.41. Let's say that this was $2,165.417 instead of 413. Same story. We still want to round the one, so we go next door. And take a look at the seven. Now this time, because I changed it on you, seven is greater than five. It's actually greater than or equal to, so it'd be consistent. We'll leave it like that. That means we round the one up to two. So the, the three was a seven. We would round it to $2,165.42. For 17, we wanted to find the length of a picture frame whose width is six inches and whose proportions are the same as a 10 inch wide by 15 inch long picture frame. There are a couple of ways you could do this. One way is to draw a picture. We've got a rectangular picture frame. I guess technically we have two of them. 
the width of one is six inches. Now, if I write this one as the width, I have to put the width in the same spot on the other picture. So that means I need 10 inches in my width spot. Now I know that on the bigger picture frame, it's 15 inches long. Now I know my picture doesn't fit the numbers, that's okay. We wanna know the length of the one that was six inches wide. So this would be our X. If you take the time to draw the picture, you can set up an instant proportion as six over X equals 10 over 15. Not a lot of people like setting up pictures, so here's an alternate method. When you set up proportions, you have to be consistent. If you decide to do length over width, you put length across the top every time. So if I go pull out my length, I'm looking for the length. So I would have X inches long. And my other length was 15. Then if I go put my widths in my problem, I have a width of six. So I had six wide. and 10 wide. So I could also choose to solve that proportion. Either one will work. For those of you who may need it solved, we can certainly do that really quickly. To solve one of these with cross multiply, it doesn't matter which one you solve, they're both going to turn out the same way. If I multiply x by 10, I still get a 10x. If I multiply 6 times 15, I get 90. To undo 10 times x, I'm going to divide by 10. So the length we're interested in is nine inches. Now, if you missed 18, the chances are you didn't finish it. Most people were able to get about halfway there and then you forgot to finish it. So if an item is $237 and it's on sale for 35% off, what is the sale price of the item? Most people that I looked at were able to find the discount cost or the discount amount. $237 times 0.35. I'm going to pull out my handy dandy calculator again. Two thirty-seven point three five. So my sale or my discount amount is $82.95. And at this point, a lot of you went and you put in 82.95 and you moved on with your life because you did the math, you got an answer and that was done. But you have to make sure you go back and reread the question to be sure you answered what you were asked. We wanted 
the sale price. So when you go to the register, how much are they going to tell you to pay? Well, without taxes. So the next step would be to take the original price and subtract out the discount. So I'm going to start with $237. I'm going to subtract out my discount. And I'm going to do that over here in Desmos again. So my new price would be $154 and five cents. They ask you to round it to the nearest cent. This is the nearest penny or the nearest hundredths place. The last one that I saw some things going on with was number 20. They say what percent of 180 is 72. And I know on the NROC videos, they deal with percent, base, and amount. And I realize that that can be confusing. So I'm going to do it a little bit different way. It's going to sound weird. Bear with me. is over of is percent over 100. We are going to fill in the pieces. Right here is 72. That's my is part. The of is the 180. For the percentage, they say what percent? That tells me my percent is an X. The 100 never changes. You don't get to change that. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care whether your pencil came from Office Depot or the dollar store. You don't get to change it. Then we cross multiply. So I would have 100 80x is 7200. I know better than to try to do that in my head. So I'm going to divide both sides by 180. But I'm going to do the actual math in the calculator. And I get that my percentage is 40%. Those were the big ones. If you have a question on your test specifically that you want to talk about, absolutely let me know. I will be happy to go through that with you. I can make you a video. We can zoom, whatever you need. Don't um, don't blow off these old test questions. If you missed them, you need to make sure you understand them because they could come back to bite you on the final. You're not done with these. So don't just throw it in a rusty file cabinet in the back of your brain. Make sure you understand what you did wrong so that you can be successful on the final exam. Again, if you have questions, shoot me an email. Otherwise, I will virtually See you guys later.